So Vinish Shivasan is back with his film for Shangalak Shesham. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And we have a lovely, lovely interview of him with film companion with Anupama Chopra. So let's check it out. It'll be very fun, entertaining. I think after, I don't know, last time we I saw his interview in English. I don't remember. I don't think I've seen any interview in English. But again, if you haven't seen the interview, it's on the film companion channel. I'll put the link to that in the description below. This video is not a substitute for that. I'll be pausing in the middle, talking in the middle. So, so go watch the interview there and this is the reaction. So without any delay, let's have a look. Vineet, we are so excited to have you in the Film Companion Studio. Welcome to Mumbai. Right. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm so happy you are here. Uh, I have to start by just expressing utter awe and admiration at how many things you do. <laughs> okay. So you've debuted as a singer, but of course you're also an actor, you're also a writer, and you're also a director who has a film coming up. Okay, I'm going to try this. Varshan Galka Shisham? Yes, yes ma'am. I got it. Varshan Galka Shisham. Shisham is easy. We're going to get to the film, but before that I have to ask you, when you can do so many things so well, um, I made the point on Twitter about the audio. I can hear that AC noise because a video is 50% audio. If the audio is not good, people would not like to watch the whole interview. It's good for you only. So I think the audio needs to be good. How do you prioritize? Like, do you say that now my priority is directing for two years or acting for the next year? How does that work? Now there is a system. What is the system? Uh, yeah, okay. so it's like... Um, if I have a stage show, um, uh, two to three days prior to that, I take care of my voice. And uh, okay. only three days after the stage show, I commit a recording. When you say stage show, you're singing. Singing. How, singing. how, how long do these stage shows go on for? Like, are you singing for three, a few hours? Three hours, yeah. Wow. So, so okay. it's like, so if... I didn't know if anything ask, about that. I didn't know anything about singing and stage shows. It's like that. So three days before, I have to take care of my voice. And three days after, only I can record. Huh. If I'm acting in a film, uh, 10 days before that, I try to schedule my recordings and finish it off. <laughs> so so it's, okay. it's like that. So, and if you're directing? I can't do anything. Then you let go of all the okay. others. Uh, I mean, writing too, you have to do. But you let go of the performances, all of that. Yeah, while we are shooting, anyways, I cannot do anything. Hmm. But in between okay. um, schedules... You fit it in? Yeah. Because you enjoy all of it. I love to do, yeah. I love to sing. And I, I love everything that I do. So, I try to. <laughs> and how many people can say that? That's the thing. And what's amazing is that this abundant talent is in the family. It's a family tradition, right? Ma'am, <laughs> it's not abundant talent. I'm trying. <laughs> no, of this in but that your, your father, Srinivasan sir, is, yeah. a, is an actor who's done over 200 films, directed yeah. to yeah. your younger brother, Dhyan, who's also in this film, yep. is also an actor and a writer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I have to sort of quoting Gabbar Singh ask ki chakki ka aata ha <laughs> How do you do this? It's a lot of rice, ma'am. <laughs> aata hai hi nahi. Aata. That's the secret. <laughs> but genuinely, how is it just because of your dad that the brothers just got into it? How how did it happen? For me, for me actually, my interest uh, to make a film started when I saw Dil Chata Hai. Okay. Um, Interesting. So, I saw it in Studio 5, Satyam. So... This is Chennai. Yeah, Chennai. So, I saw the film and I was enamored by the film. Right from the beginning, the flute bit in the uh, beginning with the titles, no? From there I was like, oh my god, this is something new. And they were all dressed in a very casual way. Before that, yeah. if we see these Hindi, Hindi films, they'll tuck in and they won't have any buttons. You know, the heroes, <laughs> this was all properly done. Correct. And they were all dressed up like the people we see around. And back then I didn't know that it was sing sound. But it was mm. feeling very natural. Yeah. And I was a hardcore fan of Akshay Khanna. I, I oh. love that. Uh, this is a very different world coming together. Not that he cannot be, but you expect him to, you know, say it's Malayalam film inspired or Tamil film, you know. He's Dil Chata, okay. And then he's Akshay Khanna fan, you know. You don't find that connections usually. Man's performance. So after coming back. Not that Akshay Khanna is bad and all. No, no, he's great. <laughs> I mean, when I stepped out of the theater, 
all that I was looking for is who did this film. And I saw written okay. and directed by Farhan Akhtar. My God, this is what I wanted to do. So then after that, I started, uh, you know, th- this was a time when VHS was leaving the industry and VCDs and DVDs were coming in. So a lot of shops were going to shut. So me and my cousin brother, we'll go source everything. I mean, we'll buy, uh, pick in up. Bulk. Yeah, we'll yeah. pick up VHS <laughs> cassettes in lot. Uh, I mean, he he had a job then, so he'll give me the money to buy VHS tapes in lots. And uh, we used to uh, source um, the classics. So we started watching. We used to go to British Council Library to get the books because back then it was difficult to get materials yeah. so from there the interest started and when uh, one day my father we were, st- we were all staying in Chennai then my father uh, saw that I'm bringing all these Kurosawa films and all that so he okay. he asked me do you have the interest to watch classic films I said yes then he told me then you start with three films Cinema Paradiso okay. uh, Good Bad and Ugly Lawrence of Arabia. Wow. So he told me. Okay. I, I've seen. Uh, no, which was that one? Last show, which is Cinema to Cinema Parajito. I've uh, seen portions of Good, Bad, Ugly uh, while studying, but Lawrence of Arabia I recently saw on the big screen for the first time. Oh my God. What a film that is. It's almost 3 or 20 minutes, and you don't feel the length. The way it's like, it's such an old film, it's uh, uh, 62, I think, 1962. But the politics of it, the messaging, it is so modern in a sense. Like, I, you know, in the beginning, I thought this film will be like, you know, some things which have not aged well or, you know, some things which are not politically correct. But that film was actually making some points which are true even today. Like, you know, it was so ahead of its time in that sense. But also with the filmmaking the number of horses you know the big war sequences oh my god like they pulled it off in 62 and any film making any excuse today like you cannot make excuse if they did it in that time today you have so many things available to you if you cannot pull you can make excuses of budget and this and that and you don't just have the vision for it that's the problem that you know such classics like shows you the you know picture of what the talent people had back then. These wow. are three different films. Huh. If you have interest, um, if you watch these three films, you will know exactly okay. which side you are leaning to. Correct. So, yeah, then, then I... Then it just yeah, happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's I talk your thoughts on the three right? films. Um, this is your sixth film, Vineet. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, you've said often that, that you want to make films which are feel good. Um, yeah, yeah. Because the one that you How made. Do you know this, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job to do some research. Okay. <laughs> right? Because Thira, the one that was tougher okay. in terms of material, was yeah, yeah. also the one that I think was the only one apparently that didn't perform to the level you yeah, needed it yeah, to. Yeah. Also, you said that it makes your. It took a toll on you yeah, yeah. emotionally yeah. because you ended up getting into a darker space. Yeah. Right? But with this one, and I'm so scared to say the name again because I think I'll mess it up. Russian Lucky Shisham. Every time I'll prompt for you. Thank you. Russian Lucky Shisham. You just say it and I'll pretend like I just knew it all along. <laughs> which, which means as the days go by. Russian Lucky Shisham means years later. Years later. Years, years okay. Later. Yeah. So in this film, what I can see from the songs, from the material that we've seen till now, is of course it's, it's a story of friendship, but there's also, um, there's so much ache. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so much pain and regret and um, a sense of loss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. And, and especially in, in the, the that song, which yeah. again, I don't want to say, please tell us. Nya Bagam. Nya Bagam, which Nya is Bagam. memories. Memories, yes ma'am. It's just okay, I've not so seen beautiful that. and aching. So, By the way. Uh, there is this thing going on of uh, Bayam Films not releasing. So this is the only film actually playing near me. So I'll be soon watching it. Hopefully it has subtitles. Uh, so this is one film I'm able to catch it. Uh, a review will be coming soon on the main channel. But uh, other two films I have no idea. And I made a video about what the issue is and what's happening. You can check it on the main channel. Are you, Vineet, in a 
sense moving away from the feel good? <laughs> uh, not exactly. Yeah, there was the most feel good kind of film. Like it's like a, you know, someone tucks you in the bed and you know gives you calm and you can have a peaceful sleep. I mean, part of the film has this melancholy. Uh, seeping through, but part of the film is happy. Yeah, uh, we are having a blast with the rest of the film. But well, don't reveal much, wishes? please. Um, I was I was in my college in two thousand six. Um, before that, in two thousand five, my father had done this film called Uday Nanatara. So it was about uh, a cinema. The cinema is about cinema, the okay. process of making film and everything, journey of a director. So after that, I have seen the. Uh, you know how that movie happened to take off, and then my father was writing it, and it was coming out, and it was becoming a blockbuster. So I've seen the journey of that film, and it completely, you know, I was I was really mesmerized by the process. So after that, I was I was thinking, someday I should make a movie about cinema. So back They're my favorite kind of movies, movies yeah, about yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just love them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, There's always so much insight, you know, and meta commentary, and, you know, how things are done, and call outs to what happens in real life, and all of that. I had a story in my head in 2006, but the story. But then, uh, it was looking really big for me. I'm, I was like 21 year old, and it was not something that I could think of at that age. Uh, it has to be set in the 70s, and there are huge set pieces. So, uh, mm. you know, uh, when I was doing my first film, before writing the first film, I thought. Then I, I was like, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't have the, you know, machinery to do this. So. Then I did my second film, third film, fourth film. Didn't have the confidence to do it, and uh, then I did Hridayam. In Hridayam, we had a lot of characters. I mean, there was a sea of characters, and yep. we go through this characters' journey, and then we dive into the subplot, and then come back to the main plot, yeah. then go further again. So that gave him all confidence. of this is there. So after writing Hridayam, and when it worked in theater. I got the confidence that okay now I can go back go back and this is interesting you know like what happens is some directors at very early age they want to directly jump to their you know mega project or their dream project and then it doesn't pan out that way because they are inexperienced you know they need experience to understand I think that's what uh, Ayan Mukherjee is now taking time making a big blockbuster before jumping on to Brahmastra 2 Must have one did well, but you know it needed a lot of refinements, and I think that's why uh, S S Rajamouli, you know, over the years he has done fourteen, fourteen films, and he has grown over each. And I think he still says that he wants to do Mamba. That's his dream project, but he still thinks he's not, you know, there yet to make it, because he needs too much, you know, ex- more experience, more filmmaking understanding, you know, how what he really wants to do is that. But all through his movies, he's learning to reach there. revisit this story because there is abundance of characters in this story also without distracting the audience from the main plot maybe i can attempt this film so that's when i started writing it so then the scary part was how to materialize it uh, you know visually so then you have the experience of doing these All many the films yeah. to to help yeah and it also features i mean rhythm was one of my favorite favorite films of 2022 you know that um it's just such a gorgeous soaring film and the music is just so brilliant uh, you repeat some of the actors right pranav yeah. mohanlal kalyani priyadarshan um but here you also directing your brother who debuted with oh, you with yeah, yeah. so obviously there is a there is a pattern you've also worked with your father in as an actor yeah. um But yet, when you're working with family, and I ask you this because um, I don't know if you saw Tora's husband, Rima Das's new film. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a wonderful film in which she directs her brother and her sister-in-law, and she told me it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do the three of you kind of work together, and 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 what are the rules you've set for yourselves? It's not that difficult, ma'am. Really? Yeah, working with Dhyan is very easy in the sense. I mean, he's your younger brother. Yeah. Thora, so you can bully him. No, 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 no. He bullies me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. Uh, if, if you're a Malayali, you'll know. <laughs> so he's somebody who likes to work every day. Huh. He has to go for the shoot every day, and there is nobody in Malayalam film industry right now who does as many films as Dian. Really? Okay. Yeah, he's shooting every day. 
except for the days he takes holidays because i have not seen his films or his films don't reach me either one because i don't recollect or maybe i missed out i don't recollect its face you know his family is wanting him to otherwise he's working every day so he's you know he doesn't choose his films he doesn't you he know he just wants to be on the set yeah yeah he doesn't care hmm. he just has to shoot hmm. every day okay so because of that he has gained so much of experience over the years it's really it was really easy to work with him because i don't have to say much he knows mm-hmm. exactly what to do there was uh, the only thing that i wanted him to do was he had to do a certain amount of weight loss before the before starting the film and while we, we were starting the film with the madras portions for, for which he has to look a bit healthy then d- during the process of the shoot he has to lose his weight and by the time okay. we are doing the kerala, kerala schedule he has to lose more weight so which he did so okay. it was not very difficult working with him and aisa kabhi nahi hota like with a family member like you you're a little bit hesitant to i don't know correct him ask for another take or you take work home and it becomes problematic you don't have any no, of those scenarios no, no. the the only difficulty is when dhyan basil director of minimal murli all of these people also in this film yeah he's also in this film then nivin is also in this film yes. then all of these people come together you know for the focus puller to take focus is a challenge because <laughs> they won't stop bullying each other they'll be cracking jokes and you know making fun of each other i have to say literally i have to say roll camera and the camera has to roll for them to stop stop okay yeah <laughs> so that was the only part so they're, they're like a bunch of kids you have to keep in in check i literally begged them please 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 let me shoot can we work yeah and we were shooting in monar and all of these guys will go to play cricket in the middle of the shoot they'll go to play, play cricket so then even the producer they are yeah but you still think ki mera paisa kharab ho raha hai he doesn't care i mean they are all playing cricket and i have to i am the only person my associate associate director is playing cricket basi uh, all of them are playing cricket then i have to literally go back them please let me shoot this film come we are losing the light this can only happen in malayalam cinema <laughs> Oh my god like the producer is like are i am playing cricket with these stars that's more important <laughs> But maybe this is why malayalam cinema is so good <laughs> cuz you're all really chill and you yeah. play like a little a few hours of cricket in between yeah. that's just fab now of course basil and nevin polly started with you yeah, yeah is is that why they a little bit take you for granted Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, such long the relationship know that the camaraderie is there so everyone everyone has that freedom with each other. Yeah. And at night also we were all uh, we were shooting in this club called Monar Club. So there are cottages and then there is one main block where uh, Basie is one in one room, I am in one room, Dhyan is in one room, Nivin is in one room. So all of them there is there is one uh, like a central l- l- place. Yeah, huh. lobby like huh. place. They are all sitting there and until late night they are jamming and they are singing. Enjoying, yeah. So when the singing starts I'll go sleep because I have to think the next day these guys are on till 4 o'clock and they'll come for the shoot by 6:30. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it was like That's that. fine. It was crazy. That's fine. If you can do that, then it's okay. <laughs> so again, I have to ask Kaun si chakki ka aata kha do. No, in this film, I I read uh, and truthfully, I'm not so familiar with Mohan Lal sir's uh, earlier films. So, but I read that Pranav is sort of echoing a lot of his legendary mm, i can see that okay. i can in, see in that of, i have seen some older monlal films which obviously is by design but i wanted to ask him that when you when you know uh, an actor comes with that kind of legacy right yeah. how do you handle that legacy because you also don't want him to be just a shadow Yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. so how do you balance and but but this film is about nostalgia it is about yeah, tapping yeah. into all that so how do you balance that he is the easiest person to work with man he comes on time before the sh- starting of the shoot he knows all lines by heart i mean he knows all the dialogues not just his dialogues right the co-actors dialogues he knows the oh. script in and out very few act like kind of interviews you hear you know like some actor on the other in a film does this like they know all that like not this their dialogue every dialogue every dialogue of the film 
It's so hard. with that kind of an actor, you know, he makes the director at ease. So that is one thing. And uh, because the movie is uh, placed in the 70s and early 80s and everything, and uh, the character drinks a lot, so naturally he resembles. There is that mm, resemblance okay. with his father. In Hridayam, uh, you know, the, the, the story is set in... College. In college. The For present. the first half, yeah. So, uh, the body language and the d- dialogue delivery is a little urban, is a little sophisticated. So, that doesn't have any shade with yeah. how mm. Lal Sir does. But then, when we are doing the 70s and when he drinks, he's exactly like his father. That's, you know... He just is. Yeah, he yeah. just is. And uh, I, uh, when we cut the teaser, I was showing it to his uncle. And the first thing his uncle say, said is, this is this is him. He didn't say, Lal sir, huh. this is him in his house. How did you capture this? <laughs> really? Yeah. So for the family members, it's not like he resembles Mohanlal. He's being himself. So, <laughs> oh. But then we saw this on camera. Then we were like, okay, can you can you do this with your mush? Right. Can you do this yeah. with two bottles down together? So he was a little hesitant to do that, but then we coaxed him into doing it. He looks like he's having a great time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also going up against a big film, right? Fahad Fasal Zavisha. They're all our friends, man. I know. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what is it like? Because what happened? What to say here now? I made a point about this in my video. Again, plugging it. <laughs> you know how they all just work together. Here yeah. in Mumbai, right? And, and there are two massive films releasing for Eid here as well, right? Yeah. Medan and Badi Mia Chote Mia. Uh, and honestly, this time there's not been so much of a clash, but often like the Diwali clash in Bollywood is like yeah. the biggest thing and everyone, like the media is full of it. Everyone asks each other, ki, like, how, what do you think will happen? Then it's like the first day numbers become a spectator sport. You know, who got more, who got more shows? I mean, it's like yeah. a blood sport. Yeah. Is it like that there? Actually, no. Not at all. Yeah, because Anvarka, when I was doing my second film, Tatatan Maraita, from back then, we have a beautiful friendship. So, Anvarka, Anvarashi, yes. I'm saying Anvarka. Yeah. Who's one of the producers. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a producer. So, he was staying in, we were all staying in one apartment. He was making this film called Ustad Hotel. So, he was Which in... Is fabulous. Yeah. So, he was in one room. Seen that? Uh, me and my music director, Shan, we were staying in the other room. So... From then, for, for for grading and for all the post work, we go together. We were mixing in the same studio. So, from from that time, there is that warmth. So, before starting... They're like a family, you know. They have their own rooms. But they come out in the dining, you know, the hall and eat together and, you know, live together in the same house. That's, that's I think, the big point. Once booking, Anvarka called me. He called me and uh, he asked me when when are you guys starting the advance booking? Then we said Sunday. Yeah, I wanted to know because I don't want to start early. Let's start together. So okay. how wonderful. Yeah. So this. So is, you work together. Yeah, yeah. And Fahad is also Fahad's second spell started uh, with Chapa Kurish. I was with him as an actor. Mm. Yeah. And okay. then we did this film called Sarush Kumar. They're all they're all friends. So it's like we all. We all want this to work for each other. Yeah. Genuinely. Mm. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter who who gets the bigger number. It only matters that we have to survive. <laughs> you know, our movie should survive. That's all. Actually, you know, Prithvi Raj had said to me, I interviewed him a few weeks before RG with him and he said that we are always happy for each other because we understand that if your film works, my film has a better chance. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we yeah. get the larger picture yeah. and, and ultimately benefits everyone. Yeah. Also, we are not here for a season, man. Yeah. We are going to do this for 30, 40 years and we, mm. you can't do that with <clears throat> carrying a lot of burden in your head. So, it's better, you know, they should do well. We should do well. But if you ask me, I'll pray for my film more. Of course you will. As you should. (laughs) You know, I want to talk a little bit, Vineet. I like this honesty. Like, yeah, that's the truth. I want my film to do really well. I... It's not like, but I'm not wishing that their film fails for my work well. So that's the main area, you know. That's where the thinking differs, the mindset. Writing process. Because you write by hand. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was so blown away when I, I read that. Um, you said that when you're writing by hand, your character, the movement of your hand and your brain are working in sync. Yeah, yeah. But it's so laborious. How do you do this? Uh, so the thing is, be it Hildeem or Varshanul Kishesham, both are like character studies, man. Mm. man. It's, it's like the coming of age kind okay. of genre. So as and when the character is much. going through that journey, I'm going with him. So this pen, paper, that connection, no, that really helps. So I am following the character. My father told me a long time back, if you're really sincere to your characters, when you start writing the scenes after a point, you won't have to write the dialogues. Ah, he said that by the them dialogues. also. Yeah. The character will speak to you and you will just have to edit it. You will just become an editor. And okay. I started feeling it over the years, um, especially with uh, Jacob in the Sorgarajim and Hardayim. I had that feeling when I was writing it and with Varshan Kishesham also. So this, you know, when it's computer, the font is not yours. The software mm -hmm. is not yours. Mm -hmm and you backspace that memory is gone you can't see your labor so ah, yeah, interesting. yeah yeah when you write a dialogue you can strike it you history can, you can write something better when you think of something better and then you can see that okay from this you progress. Know, have progress to mm. this so it kind of boosts your confidence and your self-esteem and <laughs> because <laughs> your self-esteem you know <laughs> goes for a toll when you're that's a very interesting and this is right you when you're creating something, right? Like I can, I don't make films, but something similar, making a video, you're putting in so much effort and this, 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 every creative person will have this doubt that is it good enough? Am I doing it well? And you know, all those thoughts keep coming in your mind and you have to deal with it. You know, you have to just keep going on. You cannot just dwell on that thought forever. Yeah. Writing the film. Okay. So you're writing and, and you never get exhausted with not just being able to cut and paste and because I'll, I'll ask, because I, you know for me now we need it's come to a point where i write so rarely yeah. I, I, that when i'm in a film and i'm taking notes right i'm trying to watch and i'm trying to take notes and sometimes i can't understand what i've written okay <laughs> because my writing is so terrible now but with you you don't get exhausted with that that all adds to your creative process yeah that exhaustion is also uh, adding no ma'am if two characters having are having a verbal argument i am literally arguing mm. with a paper you know i'm <laughs> scribbling so i am in that heat nice. so with the computer how do you do that i don't know yeah yeah because with the computer everything that you can see is neat yeah here if yeah. they are having a rough thing going mm. on you are <laughs> these are characteristics these are personification of you know what you're doing that's interesting you know your handwriting is also rough if they are having a romantic moment then you know, you're easier yeah you're easier so you can see it all in paper yeah you, you feel that Very with the paper i think i mean i don't know how many people would relate to this it works for me so i'm continuing with it <laughs> and how thick are you i mean what you like literally write a hundred pages yeah. by hand yeah 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 i mean not hundred when my scenes are like really long really long so so you're like when you get when you start writing when it, are you pehle just doing bullet points synopsis yes ma'am and then eventually filling it in i'll have uh, these voice notes that i've collected over the years yeah. about the subject so first thing i do is i'll sort these voice notes uh, and then i'll put a scene order then from scene 1 if i have one f first scene to the 112th scene uh, every singular voice note i'll put it into a folder so before every okay. uh, scene that's a lot of work huh, by the way <laughs> to like take those voice notes and divide them into folders 113 folders whatever the mode is i'll keep listening to one track i'll put it on loop i'll listen to it for five six times and then I, I, then when i feel that i'm in the mind space i'll listen to this voice note and then i'll start writing so this is my process plain and simple yeah. You've also said that you Very have sorted. to fall in love with characters before you start writing them, right? Yeah. And then I guess that's how they automatically then start to speak to you. Yeah. How do you fall in love with characters? Day in and out, when you think about them, you will automatically... You just start obsessing. Yeah, yeah. You Can start I? obsessing over your characters. And most of the times, they'll have your personality traits also. Your dark side, your good side... Uh, your impatience, your intolerance, it'll all come to those characters, no? So somewhere 
you know you feel you, you'll empathize for the character correct yeah. correct yeah if it was malayalam or tamil i could have easily phrased it better but so you understand yeah. actually you know i i remember a conversation i had once interviewed javier bardem and and i'd asked him he had done you know the bond villain and i'd asked him do you have to like the characters you play and he said you don't have to like them but you have to be their lawyer you have to be able to defend their yeah. actions yeah. yeah yeah you know yeah. is is that in terms well of put. acting do you have to like or do you have to be a lawyer um you have to even if the character is a bit gray you have to find justification which you done to what extent in mukunda <laughs> nodi my god what a movie and what a performance yeah. it just blanked out that he played mukunda nodi oh my god he said acting you know i was thinking of kunni ramayana and just forward about mukunda wow is the same guy that's easy because i'm i'm only acting no ma'am sure. i i don't even i don't even have to buy into that philosophy i mean abhi abhinav sundar naik is a great filmmaker i mean we worked together in tira he was my ad too so you know he has a different kind of mind you know he he has a different kind of thought process i don't align with his thought process at all but i respect his thought process i know where he, where he's coming from he had a different kind of struggle while growing up and when he wanted to become a film a filmmaker and the world was unfair to him so his perspective is coming from there and i understand that Interesting. i don't align with it but, but you can act yeah you can do that character without aligning with it yeah 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 because it's his perspective it's his film hmm. it's his conviction so i given to that but as an as a director you I would need I, to align. i would i would never make a film like mohan dhani as correct, a director correct correct okay. but i'm saying as a director you need to at least understand your character this is a very interesting detailed interview yes. must yeah. say also if if you if you're writing something dark or uh, manipulative you have to have that in mind why this guy is like this it necessarily it doesn't have to come in the dialogues but for me as a writer i should be able to okay this is why he is doing like this only then i can write for that character yeah yeah i also want to talk you need about the way you use music which is <laughs> another character in your film yeah, right yeah. uh and and you you've talked about how in life you kind of have soundtracks Yeah. in your head yeah. you know for for just life itself yeah. um, how do you work with how you use your music because you also said that you write your songs like you write your scenes yeah what does that mean <laughs> um for, for me when I, when i start writing the songs i do a lot of uh, by scenes small scenes in between the songs so fillers fillers oh, for example in darshana the 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 main thing you know the proposal that happens in between the song yeah if i have a writer on board he'll never agree with that because that is a very important part of the you know the first half of the first half of the film correct so how can it come in between you know how can it just pass that'll be the it needed to be sort of more a stand alone piece yeah right so when i'm writing uh, before composing i'll have some two three tracks in my head So okay for example there was a track called flip side so i'm listening to flip side and i'm writing it so i have that adrenaline so when i'm writing the pallavi that is the first verse so i'll i'll write whatever happens in the pallavi and then you know i'm reaching that adrenaline and now he can propose to him in the first bg so i write okay the first bg they are proposing uh, he is proposing to her and immediately after that the second verse starts which is the first charna So I I write like that. I write in detail okay. about the song. You know exactly what it has to do. Yeah. yeah. And that comes from him being a singer and a musician himself, you know, to think like that. I know the length of the talkie. I I have an idea how much of time uh, it needs for the first PG. Yeah. So then I can tell him, okay, I need an interlude which is like this long. Probably we'll keep a buffer for 10 seconds. So so like that it's the measure is very easy when you elaborately write the song yeah. but what do you want especially in this film like what do you want the music to do is it is it basically to enhance the emotions is it to take the narrative forward like as a filmmaker do you have a preference for what you would like your music to do to reflect the emotion man <laughs> maybe not enhance it but to reflect it 
whatever is happening on screen to reflect that yeah. i use music yeah so for this film you also got vinyl records which literally nobody does anymore what is the story behind that um ma'am uh, when we were doing hridayam we wanted to i like how excited he is to talk about all this you know he's not like laid back yeah asking me question i'll just you know and that's i think that's him <laughs> try something with a physical copy because physical copy no nobody is uh preferring yeah. yeah right now so it was not a market decision to do that back then there are collectors of physical copy mm. uh, all across the globe i mean the population is small but the it's real happening. connoisseurs yeah. yeah 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 so we wanted to give something for them because the movie had 15 songs so mm. it will be nice to hear it in a cassette and personally also i wanted to hear it in a cassette <laughs> so and this uh, band and nothing music they very passionate people you know they oh, are not nice. uh, business oriented guys no. why do only malayalam cinema find these kind of people i was like film companion <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly so <laughs> i see what so you did there they are passionate people so the, the the moment i told them they started looking for plants and then they found a manufacturing plant in japan and they got the this is for the cassettes yeah for the wow. cassettes they got it made oh. there and uh on the day of uh, the release of the audio morning we got it <laughs> wow yeah so this time and you sold enough copies 2000 copies fully sold and still we have orders coming in how wow. lovely yeah so there are people yeah so for vinyl records th- this time we thought we should do something bigger than that and uh, that depicts the 70s 80s you know that that time period so collectors of vinyl records also in different parts of the world so think music they themselves uh, told us wow. because the movie is uh, first half of the movie is set in the 70s and a lot of instruments are live instruments so it's more like a music from the yesterday yeah so this could really sound great in vinyl so this idea wow. came from think music and they did all the work there is one person called mani so mani was fully behind this and there was one person from mumbai who helped us his name is ajay pillai so mani and ajay pillai planned this and uh, you know the point that he knows their name it's not like yeah they did it and i know about it you know i don't know what really happened he he was invested himself one pada cassettes there is one there is one guy who designed everything for us and we sent the ma- uh, stems to the the audio to netherlands they mastered it there because we can't use the digital master uh, okay. for the vinyl because vinyl sounds completely different right so the frequencies don't match so we have to send the stems there and then our reference master and they'll master it according to that and f- and where are they actually manufactured from netherlands it went to poland for printing so it was printed okay. in poland and we got it from poland and now it's in the market and we it's can all buy this yeah yeah how incredible <laughs> and and this is also because you are such a no ma'am music are, man <laughs> <laughs> no there are collectors of physical copies who believe that you know we need to have books we need yeah. to have a uh, physical copy of films and mm. music otherwise you know there is no history for anything yeah. um, very recently i went to a school i mean uh, we went for the location scouting we wanted a good library and i was disappointed to see that you know they are converting the existing libraries to digital libraries mm. then you know there is no archiving no yeah. this digital you know you know it can get vanished in one second you need to have everything yeah uh, listening to uh, watching a movie in blu ray is totally different from watching a movie otherwise and uh, i like to use to otherwise an audio cassette is very personal but listening to a uh, song in vinyl is more rounded and it's if you have the correct vinyl player uh, it has got that wooden texture it sounds different it sounds big in a way so i think very every kind of device this. should be available for us to listen to so in europe and us they are bringing back cassettes and there is huge market for vinyl yep. coldplay or uh, billy eilish or john mayer they are all releasing audio cassettes and vinyls but our artists are not able to do it so everyone should do it i think the problem is only that it's inefficient you know we transition from that to digital because it's efficiency there and of course for nostalgia and physical you know touch and all you want it back in our lives 
but it doesn't make sense like i like, now there's no time of dvd player blu-ray players like who has you know nowadays like i cannot you know get one then you have to buy these dvds where i'll keep it you know so this all this uh, logistical issues also involved this monetary also it's expensive you know to maintain and hold all of this so it's not for everyone you know if you have passion if you have money you know if you have space you can but uh, for most people you know where technology is going how efficient things are becoming that's the route they will take if sharukh sir is making a, his next film if he releases a vinyl it'll be a game changer well i hope he watches this and gets a few ideas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know i saw that uh, you posted a reel of you guys shooting the bts of mother oh my god <laughs> you saw that <laughs> you all look like you're having such a good time what was happening there <laughs> so uh, we had charted that song shoot for two days but then we realized that if we really plan it we can finish it in one day okay. so that madhupaguru was shot in one day one day one day yeah. wow so uh, we were thinking because um, okay we, if we start lighting at 5 o'clock and if the art director finishes everything the night before my uh, dop can Start, start lighting up at five o'clock. He'll finish by ten thirty. So we have wow. this seven to ten thirty time for all the artists to rehearse the lines. So we got the entire. Uh, they are all musicians, man. Mm. So we got all of them, and uh, we shot it in one place called Malayakal uh, House. So one corner of the house, you know, we all flocked around and we started rehearsing the song. So by ten thirty, they are thorough with the song. they know the lyrics by heart so that part is done when we ourselves are singing the song and we ourselves are performing behind the camera nobody will have a feeling no in front of the camera nobody will have a feeling that we are being judged right mm, so it becomes very easy for them so and like literally the whole unit was singing everybody was singing yeah. yeah yeah so it becomes like okay we are we are one unit nobody is looking at us they are they are doing the same thing because darshana group activity shooting, uh hridayam darshana was very hesitant because she is very she's a person who comes from a very serious kind of cinema that kind of thought so before uh, before the shoot itself she told me vinirata i don't know how i'll do this because it's not my space huh. then i told her don't worry oh, you, you alone won't be performing we'll all be performing with you <laughs> so we started doing that in darshana and she just bloomed you know she so it's a fantastic song yeah. but you're saying <laughs> that But everyone behind the camera yeah. is singing and performing like everyone in front of the camera front of the camera so they don't have any inhibitions <laughs> whoever is performing in front of the camera they have absolutely no inhibitions there is no wow. barriers right. no walls no hierarchy so you know it it'll flow like one yeah that's just wonderful <laughs> well you all look like you had a ball yeah yeah <laughs> plus we we all have fun <laughs> sometimes man huh. when we shoot like that the 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 hand is out of the frame all these things no when you, you look at cinematography we don't care it's, <laughs> like, it's getting it's okay. the emotion yeah, the, yeah. and the yeah. so energy the emotion is there yeah. yeah yeah no it it certainly looks like that so you're making films with so much positivity and so much fun and you know enjoyment and it's not like a task it's a job for people like you just enjoying yourselves and just loving doing this of course what you you know watch at the end it will be something special you know you were there vinit at the cusp of when the sort of malayalam new wave was ushered in right yeah. because traffic you already calling it widely that? spoken about traffic in 2011 is widely spoken about as the film that started this new malayalam wave and and which has resulted in in actually malayalam cinema being the best in the country do you remember and i know it's very hard when you're in the moment but do you remember having any sense ki things were changing um we all had a feeling because uh, i think it really started with tamil nirad coming into film industry yeah he brought in a different kind of aesthetic to malayalam cinema okay. uh, he did this film called bigby so that was the uh, i feel on a, personally i feel that was the beginning that was the game changer but this was before 2010 right then from amal neerath a crop of cinematographers started 
coming out and post 2010 a lot of new directors started coming new writers started coming so with this when the, the cinema new generation department had i had asked uh, samir ka once when i was doing chapa kurish samir ka how do you how, how do you look at cinematography uh, with such ease because when i went for the shoot they were shooting it with canon 7d <laughs> Uh, not even a right. proper digital camera. They're shooting it with Canon 70 and the light up is done with LED lights. Wow. They never had, uh, you know, these uh, power lights or anything. No fancy lights. Just LED strips and one wow. 70 camera. And I was enamored by that process. Before that, I have worked in films where HMI lights and power lights and, you know, big setup. Massive. Yeah, massive yeah. setup. And yeah. this is like, you know, we just, we are just shooting in streets. And I was like, how do you have that confidence? Then he told me, we don't, uh, we look at camera as a tool. Mm. We don't look at it with respect. We look at it as a tool. Mm. And for storytelling. Yeah, for storytelling. Yeah. So yeah. when you look at it as a tool, you don't have that uh, fear of the equipment. This is, this is exactly what he told me. So that that looking at it as a device, I think it came from that Amal Neerad school of Very interesting. Uh, filmmaking. Yeah. And post 2010, I think a lot of people were frustrated about the kind of cinema that was being made in Malayalam. Everybody, everyone was wanting to have a change and Anwar Rashid made those Ustad Hotel Ashik Abu made uh, Salt and Pepper. Uh, oh, I have not seen that movie yet. I, I, we, uh, I, I can't say we made Rajesh Pillai and Sanjay Bobby made Traffic. And I had a film called Malarwadi Arts Club and later I made Tatatan Marayatha. And uh, then Mahesh Narayanan came. Yeah. Martin Prakat came. Yeah. And so many new LG, LG, Lijo, Lijo made a massive That's right. change. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of directors. He's his own subgenre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of filmmakers came, a lot of technicians came, a lot of new music directors came. Mm. And the scenario changed. Yeah. What is it like now, um, Vinny? Do you have a sense that. And, and of course, I, I get that that there is such a sense of camaraderie and there's such a sense of togetherness within the industry. Yeah. Uh, how do you all, uh, and I also mentioned this to Prithviraj, that in, in Malayalam films is where the credits list, the thank yous are the longest. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be like five slides of just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I started putting, putting songs for thank you because it's too long. So long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just fantastic. Yeah. So, it's amazing to me that the success that Malayalam cinema has enjoyed in the last decade has not um, nurtured more cutthroat competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, how, why is that? I, I think everyone know the wants to work with everyone. Everyone... There's no pulling down. I think that's the point. There's no one trying to pull the other down and say, I am the better. And everyone's striving to further, you know, Striving for perfection and making the best thing they can, but not on the, you know, uh, what do you call it? Not by pulling someone down. They have to do better. And they are support for everyone, you know. It's not like they want to pull someone down. If they want to push everyone together with them. Oh, you know, everyone is wanting to have that camaraderie. For example, if you look at Manumal Boys, Khalid Rahman has acted in yeah. that film. And he's the director of Talumala. Yeah. And for his next film, uh, People from Manumal Boys have gone and acted. <laughs> so it's like, you know, nobody is into one profession. Samir Tahir is a cinematographer, yeah. but he's producing the film. You're all multi hyphenated yeah. artists. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. everyone needs everyone. Everyone yeah. wants to work with everyone. Yeah. So probably that is the. If, if you are in your designated space, and if you're only called for the one thing, one thing, yeah, it's a it's a different kind of equation that you have. Mm. You are second guessing about the other person. Okay, he's thinking like this. He's thinking like that. But when you are all working together, you know the person. Yeah, you you know the people. Then those, uh, you know that that uh, thought about the other person. No, that changes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. You know the other thing that really intrigues me <laughs> is that in in Hindi cinema. There's so much conversation about nepotism, right? Yeah. And there's so much <laughs> flack given okay. to Hindi cinema for nepotism. The word is yeah. being spoken. But the truth is, there's nepotism everywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Malayalam cinema, the top stars, Dulkar, Fahad, Prithviraj, yeah. are all yeah. nepo babies. You're a nepo baby. It's, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And baby. Hindi cinema, it's all five families that are running it. Yeah. Why do you think Hindi cinema specifically gets the flack? 
I don't know, mommy. You have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what is different in Malayalam cinema in terms of families working together? I guess it's just a done thing. Um, Nobody really comments on it. As long as the film works, yeah, it's okay. Um, mm. When the films don't work and the yeah. actors who are coming from the film family are given projects after projects, that's a problem. That's a problem. Correct. That's a problem in a, any industry. He just exposed Bollywood. <laughs> Like, you know, I was just saying, I would actually put film companion in that. Huh? Like, you see these star kids, you know, getting films and then they're not working and then they're getting like lead, being the lead person, not even like a heroine in a film. They are leading the films and they're not working. And then their PR machinery with film companion also. Film companion is doing a special programs with them about their, you know, career and their artistry as an actor. Like they have not achieved enough yet for them to do a session with you. It's all a PR machinery. I don't know if film companion gets paid by the, you know, PR to, you know, do a session on that. I don't know how that works. Maybe not. I'll not, you know, uh, think of, uh, what do you say? Uh, not a theory. What do you call it? C theory, confu, come on, come on, conspiracy theory, uh, but uh, yeah, so even they are part in part of this, you know, uh, and yeah, like I don't, I don't know, like names, but you see yourself that why this actor who has not done well is still getting roles and that to lead roles in big films, like what and what basis is that happening? Maybe you know she comes from a place of power and uh, you know all of that so money is being poured in so that's why they are getting the lead roles so that's true that's true in Bollywood it's not based on performance like a lot of people they have not done well in three four films now they should not be getting any roles but they're still getting and big big production houses big big names are associated with them so and even film companion is doing it so you know that it's on them also but if you look at Dulkar or Fahad or um uh, Prithvi. Prithvi. Yeah. They're all doing... They're all such, fantastic actors. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. all delivering. They're all, they're all working hard. Yeah. As long as you're working hard and you're, you know, pushing the envelope and being nobody successful, minds. nobody minds. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a problem. Yeah. 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 Okay. One last question for you. I'm fascinated that you work in Malayalam cinema, but you live in Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> you keep going back and forth, right? Yeah, yeah. Why is this the preferred mode? They don't know me there, man. Kahapa, Chennai. Chennai. That's yeah. not true. They I mean, must know you. You're a successful actor. Yeah, but knowing is okay. Craze is. They're not mobbing you. No, nobody. Okay. Nobody cares. Huh? You know, <laughs> they, they, from a distance, they'll they'll know this is this person. That's it. Sometimes they'll come and talk to me. That's it. My freedom is not limited. You know, I'm 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 standing on the gro- ground. I'm meeting people. You know, my life hasn't changed. So that kind of helps me, I think, as a filmmaker. To be a better creator? I, I think so, yeah. you know, because I'm, I'm able to be, I'm able to connect with uh, the people around, you know. Okay. Uh, when, when that part of your life is, because I see that a lot uh, happening for people in Kerala. They move from indoor to indoor because they are recognized everywhere. Yeah. So mm. when you start moving from indoor to indoor, you're disconnected with the world. No, you should be on the That's road. That's true. You should be on the streets. You should be... Experiencing within life. The, within the people, you know, who who are like rooted and, you know... And who are the yeah. consumers of your yeah, story? Those are the people who, who are giving you these stories. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I think Chennai is better <laughs> that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, if I had an option to stay in my hometown, Talashiri, uh, I would really prefer staying there. I really miss that part of my life, formative years. I really miss it, but uh, right now, yeah, Chennai is... This is the best way. Yeah, yeah. And how often do you go? Like, one, like how often in a month would you go to Kochi? Three, four times minimum. Really? Yeah. yeah. And that's not exhausting? No, no, no. It's all, all the work is happening there, no? That's why when mm. you call me to Mumbai, I had no problem because I'm <laughs> shuttling every week. You're just a wanderer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's so lovely. Vinita, I've enjoyed this so much. Thank you. Thank and you so much, ma'am. So much, so much luck for your film. I cannot wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You and I cannot wait to watch it soon. But a lovely interview, you know. A interview we don't get often, and there's so much we understood by his process, how he writes songs, but you know, between his scenes, how he shoot the, it's so fun and entertaining, enjoyment, and his take on you know Malayalam cinema, what's happening, why it's working so well, the camaraderie about nepotism. So they kind of covered many many things and talked about the film also about the vinyl and you know cassettes. Uh, again, passion and just excitement for you know films for. making working with this art form and i think that's clear. like i don't know if still people cannot see and confused why is my son now working so well like it's in front of you there's no you know mystery or a formula they have cracked that no one else have it's it's clear it's just passion for films and film making all only that lovely interview uh you know looking forward to the film now and uh, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below and you can check out this video next and i will see you next time